Hi there, Jens Sverre here. I've taken on a project for a machinist friend here. Um, it's a um, <clears throat> 45 style, this generic typification. In this case, it comes from HBM, so it's called an HBM 45 Profi Fresh Machine. It's a um, quite hefty mill at uh, 330 kilo with the substantial castings. This being, of course, the saddle base and the head, and over there is the um, call it the saddle or the bridge piece to the column, the column itself, and the table, and of course, those smaller pieces. It's um, a very, I would say, um, price function wise nice mill it's not probably the most uh, accurate but for that price which we can say is in the region of 2000 i've seen as low as 2000 dollars uh, so around let's say 2000 euro and up it's i would say like almost unbeatable i cannot imagine how they can make uh, like anything for, for the price uh, say if you for instance, uh, divide the uh, one, two, three, four, and call it five, at least say four different major assemblies then. Uh, let's say then $2,000 or euro, and then in euro then 500 euro per piece. So can you imagine being able to make this for 500 euro, including everything with the motor and everything and, and, and the rest? <laughs> it's, it's surprisingly cheap anyhow uh, despite all the, um, the niceties it's uh, not probably the most accurate mill around so uh, it has sort of shortcoming of flaws there which is what uh, my friend here hopes to to rectify or overcome namely to take it apart and uh, do away with the, with whatever, uh, let's say, uh, fit and finish issues there may be, or alignment issues. For instance, the the head to, you no, know, the base to column um, alignment here has certain, let's say, uh, at least uh, it's not exactly as supposed to be. And um, for instance, here then. because this is not entirely flat so um, there are something that should be measured so, and uh, probably rectified possibly rectified my contribution here is to to measure up and then probably then uh, improve upon the fit and finish alignment issues there may be in addition to um, then which involves scraping of course and uh, alignment of the surfaces and uh, and as I said, the column to, to base here um, supposed to be uh, flaking here. Not too bad, really. It's at least a very fine meal, but the other parts have been just not rough meal, but at least just milled, so it could be improved. Moving on to the head here, we have um, this, which to me is sort of a normally, at least, sort of a uh, an Achilles heel actually, but weak point on these machines. This particular design, this is longer and uh, more effective, so to hold up the weight of the of the casting here, um, and also have a has a, a triangular gib, which is of course better. Then um, the head itself, um, in addition to just measuring up and probably, if anything, at least trying out to get the possible 
the highest uh, possible amount of surface finish to uh, the other part. This um, needs to be modified in two ways. And one way is, uh, according to the owner, that uh, the spindle um, rack and pinion feed is not the most accurate. So, um, if I get this right here. This slot he wants to get rid of, and the way he wants to get rid of that is uh, to have me uh, mill the uh, or I think I will use a 50 millimeter face cutter here for this to mill out this larger. So, uh, and this way he will uh, be able to, I guess, with this piece then. And with a larger piece here, bore a, a little bit off center hole and to, to move this a little bit lower or closer so get a better fit to the spin. And also there was, uh, where was it? It's quite a heavy piece. Uh, yeah. Here, wants to me to, to flat mill this, uh, this surface on the inside and put a, a little bit larger hole there and flat, uh, flatten this surface so he has a Let's call it a, a flat surface to which you can mount. I um, don't remember exactly what it was, but enlarge this hole and uh, make it flat on the inside. Of course, I need to, to measure up so that the spindle to the, the column and also the column to the base and everything is, is square and accurate. And moving, moving over to the uh, table and the column and this piece here. Um, my friend, he has no big table as I have and uh, no long enough straight edges. So therefore he's not able to um, to make do with all the scraping and, and uh, measuring as I can. So uh, this is what I'm going to, to try to do first and to measure these long pieces also. Um, but we'll go about this in a, in a methodical way as I've been taught. Just wanted to give you an intro on the scope of the project. And uh, there are some special tools also required. So uh, say for instance, how do you uh, scrape this piece or measure up this piece? And for this reason, you can make yourself uh, uh, something like this, which is a, 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 called a, um, a surface plate that you can, that is hollow. And I've also then dimensioned it uh, for a couple of special projects here so that it fits over here. Then you can glue up this piece to measure. And of course here that is critical that this piece uh, which contacts with the, with the big head has as, as uh, much surface area as possible and also is accurate so he has already measured up which uh, indicates to me that it's not entirely flat so this certainly has uh, some room for improvement. And um, he has already scraped here, so I know I can take that for flat, but I will try it anyhow. Uh, these bridge pieces, this and the saddle, is of course where uh, you really um, have um, room for, uh, or where it is especially important that everything is, is square and uh, perpendicular uh, to one another because um, short surfaces here also, you can have, uh, let's say, a leverage lever that uh, just amplifies the error if you have a small error to the to the longer pieces so that's important so this piece here 
will be dealt with and also then and here also is another key uh, point when you, when you store things like this uh, these long castings it's very important like on you do on the straight edge to have uh, them uh, either hanging as i have on the wall with my other straight edges but if you store them on the table like this uh, not directly onto the flat plate you have to use like this which um, balances out the weight so i've done this for the for the castings here and also for the table so the table all, all rests on something that is about um on the bezel points two thirds uh, or one one third in from each side um i have already just played around with um with the scraping of the table here so if you look at the table there you will see that it's sort of it's very early it's just one cross scrape one there and one there which i marked up here but then i at least i see that it it almost covers and uh, that tells me that even now the surface here is kind of rough i see the milling marks it's is okay when it comes to flatness So I wanted just to, to have produce a little bit more um, nice texture so that I could um, could uh, use the uh, the foot of the indicator and then run on both sides because now I want to do this in the in the way I've taught I've been taught and measure up um, the flat surfaces and then dovetails here to the of course to the table upside <laughs> the top side of the table here which is ground very nicely i think and also prove that this is flat to the of course taking away the cover here to the plate so um that's one thing and then over here on the column um i've been it's, it's resting on the dovetail ways uh, on the front here but here the flat here will also be tested to the plate uh, I'll probably scrape the, the dovetails and the, or at least drew up the dovetail so I can use that and then I can rest the dovetails directly onto the table and measure up this in relation to the um, to the uh, to the ways and of course as I said, this kind of construction here uh, will amplify the error on on top here. If you picture yourself the the, the foot here and the, um, the width, uh, the depth of the foot here, also the width, uh, the depth to a, a large degree, then the width amplifies errors, any small error I have on the length of the casting of course so this is very important to have this then true and for stability reasons also to have it um, connect or or um, mate up to the surface or the two surfaces here mating together so to have enough contact area for uh, stability but again for straightness then uh, very important to um, to not have any any kind of error and what i like to do is um, is as normal i like to to divide it into three 
so like this and also this side in three call it like this and then have these surfaces here to bear so I had no issues um, with um, the center uh, being like a dome so it, it rocks but of course here is already dished out so that's taken care of uh, in, to a large degree and also the 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 base casting is actually then so that it just rests here and here and is relieved here so it is actually just resting here anyway so here this should take care of itself but these flats needs to be very very precisely aligned so that I don't get any issues especially when the milling head is on on the on the um, on, on top if at all that uh, that is of grave importance if you shall do long pieces and here we can see that uh, this is a relief area in the middle here it's only bearing on the sides here so the only thing possibly that is needed is to to take out the middle of the foot of the column so that it doesn't rest exactly here but here of course it's uh, it's not bearing but then you see the importance that this is dead uh, flat and aligned so this has to be proven also you can't take that for granted especially not when he, he measures that the, that the column is tilting a little bit forwards and to the side And then the gibbs, which are uh, actually cast iron, they need to be flat, of course, which they are, well, not quite, but they are quite good, but they could be scraped a little bit better, I think. So I'm not sure what um, exactly uh, looks like hand scraping. So my take on this is uh, probably to go uh, at least um, use the bikes a lot on the longer pieces uh, to save time. So. so this is my project, which uh, is uh, going to be a little bit uh, in competition with this one, at least until this is finished, which is my last Myford, where I have um, reverted to having the motor and um, on a angle bracket inside here and in this case I found a place for the driver here um, just I could cover this with a with a plate of course like I did with the other one where I had the motor here and the cover plate just something that is painted gray if if that at all matters but I think that was a, a, a an okay placement and the rest is just as I had with the other, so um, um, yeah, that's nice. And also bought a new truck, which was coming with the mounted plate, and uh, that was also surprisingly accurate, actually. <laughs>